So it gives me great pleasure to introduce our next speaker. And I know you're not supposed to have favorite speakers, okay? But I do, and it's Vaughn, just so you all know. I like you all the rest, but Vaughn is my favorite. And I think it's actually mostly due to the power of his magical mustache. So he's a veteran of several startups, including Trade Me, and he founded, coded, and then publicly launched Vend, a company with incredibly cool offices and a bunch of incredible employees who fill my social media tweets with tweets of how much fun they're having at work every day. Literally, when I'm sitting bored at work, all of his employees are like, hey, we're at Vend, it's awesome. So I have this jealousy thing going on. His obsession for cloud-based applications began as a mission to prove that functioning and successful point-of-sale software could actually succeed in the cloud and was inspired by Xero. And the nice thing about Vend is that retailers get up and running in minutes with software that they love to use. And it's not often you hear people who love to use software. So this year, Vaughn was winner of the EY Entrepreneur of the Year Technology and Emerging Industry Award and has previously won the NZ Innovators Award. And one thing I really love about Vaughn, other than I'm going to plug it right now, we have co-founded a charity together, so we work together a lot and it's awesome, OMG Tech. Other than that, it's his willingness to share his stories and his teachings. And his blog, Eight Degrees, gives great advice on how to do the amazing things that he does, like fit hundreds of meetings into one week schedule and how to bring up an incredible family and how to not burn out when so many things seem to need to be done. So Vaughan's advice to his younger self, bootstrapping growth is hard and slow, but if speed is of the essence, then raising capital is hard, but fast. And with that, I would like to introduce to you Vaughan Rizal. Hello, I, I don't have any slides, so uh, I'm going to be the show today. I, I might spring into dance, but probably not. I might sing, but definitely not. Um, so uh, I had a talk with a few people before uh, the event kicked off, just whilst we were milling around, asking questions about what would actually be useful things for me to talk to you about, because when you're in the middle of a, a startup and you're, you're going at such fast pace, you kind of forget about all the things that were kind of important in year one and year two. Um, so, you know, uh, I've, I've written down a few notes from um, things that people ask me about, um, and, uh, and maybe I can tell a bit of the story about Vend as I go. So Michelle's already given a, a great introduction about uh, what it is we do. So we are a, a SaaS-based application, um, very much inspired by what Rod was doing and Zero, and, and that was kind of cool because, you know, back Four years ago, we've only been in, in, uh, alive uh, for four years. Um, but back then, it was really cool to see this story about uh, Zero, who was you know, seemingly taking the world on and proving that you could build amazing things from New Zealand. And I thought, that's cool. I want to do that too. Uh, and so I did. Uh, and so that's my first point, is that uh, starting is, is usually the, one of the biggest roadblocks, the biggest barriers that you're actually going to face, which is... You, know, you always come up with some bullshit reason as to why you can't, can't do it or why now is the wrong time. But, um, uh, and some of those reasons are really valid and you should totally listen to them because that's your spidey senses telling you, it's like, well, you know, that's you going through the risks. It's like, well, what if I quit my job? What's the risk in that other than not having any money and, uh, and starving? And that never happens. Nobody ever starves to death in a startup. So that's, that's a bullshit reason. Um, but uh, at some point you've got to, you should totally listen to those fears, but then you should, you should fucking knock them off one at a time. <laughs> and it's like, okay, so I'm scared about this. What am I gonna do to uh, mitigate that risk? And that's what it's about. It's about understanding what your risks are and then coming up with plans to, to deal with those risks. Um, and you'll find that there is, chances are there isn't a risk that you, you can't come up with a really valid plan for. Um, and so starting, I mean, it sounds so obvious, right? It's, that's why it's called a startup, is because you at some point start. But, and, and then it's about not stopping. So, you know, you get going, and then, uh, you know, we heard the word earlier today, which is momentum. It's like you've got to get that momentum going. Uh, and you can do that a number of ways. So in the, in the early days, it's really around telling stories. And you'll think that your story that you have isn't really interesting, but it is, you know, um, and to a whole number of different audiences. Um, you know, one of, the, uh, one of the things that I find that a lot of early stage startup founders are scared of is, is talking too much or telling everybody about the big picture, about the big idea in case somebody else goes and pinches it and, and, and does it instead of you. 
which is, again, a totally bullshit reason because um, uh, maybe that has happened in the past, but if, you, if you're running at such a pace you know, and you're throwing yourself at it 100%, then, uh, then they're not going to be able to catch up on you because you've probably been thinking about this thing a lot longer than they have um, and you've probably done a lot of work on it. Um, uh, and the other cool thing about telling your story a lot is it creates this really cool motivation in that um, once you start going out there and telling people about this crazy idea you're going to do, then you've kind of got to do it, otherwise you look like a bit of a dick. Um, and so, you know, that was a, one of these funny thought patterns that I identified really early on. It's like, oh man, if I tell that guy about my idea, then he's going to think I'm a dick if I don't do it. And as soon as I found myself thinking that, I was like, fuck, I'm going to tell him. And he's going to shame me, uh, you know, two years down the track if I haven't done it. Um, and that never stops, like, you know, uh, even once you started, um, start talking about, you know, how big you're going to be. It's, it's okay to have huge aspirations, and as Kiwis, it's something that we really suck at is, uh, even if we have them, we just don't talk about them. Uh, uh, you know, five years ago, you never really heard about Kiwi software companies talking about being, building a billion dollar business from New Zealand, and today we've, we've already heard it a couple of times, you know. Uh, and, you know, fuck a billion, let's build 10 billion dollar businesses, you know, there's, why stop at a billion, you know? Um, and so it's really cool to hear that sort of aspiration coming through. I mean, you should, probably shouldn't on day one, even before you've got a product and the customer be going out there going, yeah, we're going to be a billion dollars, because uh, people will just think you're a bit of a dick. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's, you can still tell that story about, you know, there are steps. You, can, you don't go from zero to a billion overnight, even though it feels like there's all these overnight successes that happen. It's, it's always a 10 plus year journey. But you can tell that story about that next step, you know, uh, you know, two rungs above where you are now, which is like, you know, we're going to have customers in 100 countries or, you know, we're going to grow a team of 20 people. Or whatever that next aspirational goal is, start talking about that because the more you talk about it, the more you're committing to it um, and it creates that motivation. Uh, there's lots of other things that motivate and it's really important for you to figure out what they are for you. So fear, like I mentioned, like fear of at being a dick is quite motivating. Greed, maybe you want to build a billion dollar business because you want a billion dollars. Um, that's a lot of money. Um, and you'll probably need to raise some money along the way so you won't get to keep it all. Uh, but it's important to identify what those, those motivators are for you and remind yourself about them. And um, you know, for me, I think fear is, you know, there's, there's really only two. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a set of scales, right? It's fear and greed, fear and greed. That's it's what it always boils down to. And I tend to lean on the fear side because greed is greedy. <laughs> and nobody likes a greedy bugger. Um, uh, but yeah, be humble. It's really important to be humble because uh, the other secret weapon that you will discover as you go is that uh, the power of your success is going to come from the people around you. It's not about you. Uh, it's about the team that you can build around you. Um, and this is one of the things that will kill your startup or your idea, is if you, th if you think that you are scalable, is that you can do everything. Um, you know, I've, I've got a, a nickname at Venn now, I'm Chief Delegation Officer, because you know, uh, I, I'm constantly trying to make myself redundant. Um, and by doing that, I hire people who are smarter than me. I'm probably the dumbest person in the organization, to be honest. And, and I'm okay with that because, you know, it means everybody we bring on board and we try and foster this and, and all of our, our team hiring is that make sure you're hiring people smarter than you because it makes your life so much easier. <laughs> um, but it also, uh, you know, rises the tide for everyone. Um, and letting go, you know, trusting people, trust. So one of the things we did right from day one is just have this open policy of trusting everybody we bring on board, you know, investors, staff, you name it, anybody who's involved in the business, uh, treat everybody like grown-ups and share information openly and honestly. You know, uh, you know how much money we're burning. You know, uh, you know we've got a, uh, we've got screens on the wall in the office which have all of our key metrics. Which some are motivating and some are well not demotivating, but you know some are fear metrics. You know, so we've got the day we run out of money, it's on a screen on the wall. You know, and so everybody knows it, uh, and it's it's like you know we'll go out and. Well, you've got two choices, right? We either make money or we go and raise more money to, to fuel the growth. But it's still really important that everybody understands that if we do neither of those two things, then there is a date where we've just run out of cash uh, and the dream is over. Um, 
And it's, it's amazing how empowering that is for people to know that. You know, we thought, we agonized over this for ages, thought, shit, that's going to scare the bejesus out of people. You know? um, but uh, again, you treat everybody like grown-ups. You put it into context. It's like, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully we're not going to actually run out of money. But you know, based on our current plan and our current revenue targets, we either break even by this date or we raise money by this date. And uh, both of those things are incredibly valid. And so the, the, the thing that we're focusing on at the moment is growth. And so we've made the decision that you know, we, we're probably not going to go to break even. Uh, uh, like was mentioned earlier, you should always, 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 always have a plan uh, to get to a break even position uh, if possible. Because uh, you never know what, what will happen. Because you know, you know, five or six years ago, nobody really saw the GFC coming, right? Uh, it was all happy days, and then suddenly it wasn't. Um, but have that aspiration. So you know, you know we're serious. We are, we are absolutely serious about building a ten billion dollar company from New Zealand, and so that's going to take a lot of money. You can't bootstrap a ten billion dollar business, and so that's my next point. Just raise money, like seriously. Uh, it is hard. It is really, really hard. It's not, not a trivial thing. And you know, the stories about being in the valley and doing deals on napkins doesn't happen. Or at least the, the ones that do happen, they're probably not the best deals and you probably shouldn't be doing those napkin deals. A napkin term sheet is not a, a great thing. Um, but don't be afraid of dilution and uh, bringing on other people to help you grow your business. People ask me, like, you know, uh, so I'm a 25% shareholder of Vend. And people, I talk to people and they say, Chat, you've given away so much of your company. It's like, dude, I haven't given it away. They gave me shitloads of money, and that's helped us you know, <laughs> grow the business. You know, so, um, but you know, I have a smaller chunk of something that's way, way, way bigger than anything that I could have bootstrapped out of, out of my spare room. So don't be afraid of that. But the important thing to uh, to make sure that you're you're doing when you're bringing in the investment is is make sure that it's not just about the cash because. Um, you know, there's other things that you can get with investment, like networks and contacts and, and helpful people and directors and, you know, there's like a smorgasbord, it's a menu of, of things that you should be considering. And you've got to consider what's right for you um, at, at your stage of your growth. So maybe I'll talk a little bit about our capital raising journey because I reckon it's pretty interesting because there, no, there is no rule book, there is no right way to do it. Um, so we've done five rounds, uh, we've raised about 30, something mil in total. Uh, but that first round was literally 100K just to, uh, to overcome that first objection, right? Which was, you know, how am I going to feed the kids? You know, if I throw myself at this 100%, how am I going to make sure that, you know, my family doesn't suffer? And so that initial round just bought enough runway for me to stop doing all the other stuff I was doing and focus, you know, 120% on, on Vend. Uh, and so we did that locally from New Zealand, that was uh, Sam Morgan and Ryan Simpson, um, who I met through Trade Me. Um, and then our second round of investment, we raised it from Germany, shock horror. And so we didn't raise it from uh, the Valley or, or New Zealand, even though our New Zealand investors followed on. Um, and this is a really interesting story, and this is again about that telling the story. So um, in that first year, even before we had a product in market, I was out there telling stories, going to events, any opportunity there was to stand up on a stage and, and talk about what, what it is we were doing. Um, and so I went to one of those launch events in, in the Valley where, you know, it's all vaporware, but you talk about how you're going to launch your product and take over the world. And, uh, and I thought it would just be a good exercise to get good at talking about what it is you're doing. Um, but then about a week after that, I received a phone call. Actually, it wasn't a phone call, it was a Skype. Actually, it was an email. And actually, I found this email. <laughs> I found this email yesterday because I was... I was in the, the pre-Christmas cleanup. I was just going through, and I can't remember what I searched for on in my, in my Gmail, but I found this email from Christoph, who was uh, uh, my German friend. Well, he wasn't at the time. He was just some weird German guy who was emailing me. Um, and, uh, and yeah, he just sent me an email out of the blue. He'd seen me at uh, the, the event, and he wanted to talk more about what it is we were doing. And I thought, wow, oh, okay, some German dude. Anyway, so, um, and we had a Skype. And he was all very energetic and interested. Yeah, yeah, this all sounds very good. Um, and I just, I told him the whole story. I, was, I shared everything openly, you know, the fact that, you know, we had no customers or whatever and, you know, uh, all of that stuff, but the vision about what, what it is we were doing. And he was like, oh, this is very good, very good. Um, and then a month later, he dropped me another line. He said, hey, how are things going? I was like, oh, it's this dude again. Um, you know, so, yeah, I jumped on a Skype with him and, and I had a chat with him. And, I, you know, we'd, we'd got some customers by then. And so, you know, things were moving along and... 
Uh, he was like, ah, yeah, it's all good, 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 good. Um, meanwhile, he was, you know, I could hear him tapping around the keyboard. And he was taking notes of, of all of our progress as, as, as our progress, my progress was just made back then. Um, and we kind of kept in touch every other month. He would reach out and uh, would have a, a little chat. And then after about six months, at the end of the Skype, he said, yeah, yeah, this is all very interesting at all. Uh, would you like some money? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I didn't need the money at the time, so I felt kind of awkward. It was kind of like, uh, uh, I'm sure you should probably say yes to this, but I don't need the money right now. And, but he was like, that's cool, that's cool. Um, and, but you know, we kept kept in conversation for another six months, and you know, I kept telling him my numbers, and things were you know things were going up like this. Um, and then the time came when I actually needed some money, and so at the end of the, the Skype call, I said, "Christoph, actually need some money now. Uh, would you be keen to invest?" And he was like, "Absolutely, absolutely." Um, so that conversation was like you know about six to nine months of me me talking to this random guy who you know didn't know who he was, and then he invested. And uh, the first time I'd met him was. Uh, last year, uh, and since then he's invested three times uh, in quite sizable amounts. And then what I learned about Christoph was that like, he was the uh, early stage investor in Zendesk um, and a few other uh, SaaS startups. So he 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 was quite knowledgeable about the space, and he really liked what it was we were doing. And we could see a lot of the same patterns in what we were doing that he'd seen in uh, companies like Zendesk. And so yeah, you should uh, you never know who's listening, so you should be telling your story because. Uh, in this case, it was just some random crazy German guy um, uh, who turned into be one of our cornerstone investors and has been a great supporter for us ever since uh, day one. Um, and that's kind of held true with all of the other investors that we've brought on board is, you know, it's always been a six month journey at least and it's always been about telling a really good story and a very real story because you're going to have to back it up. You can't just make shit up, uh, which is why you should, shouldn't be afraid to be open and honest with your numbers because you know, maybe round up to the nearest, you know, million, uh, you know, <laughs> bake in a little bit of sizzle, but, um, but, uh, but generally, uh, you, you should be pretty open and honest. Um, what else can I tell you? Uh, so much, just do it. Like, it's, it's really freaking exciting, you know. Um, you know, uh, I never really thought in four years' time that, uh, like, I always had big aspirations around how big we could build then, but I never thought we'd be, you know, today we're we've just clocked over 200 people, uh, uh, and you know we've got seven offices around the world, and and it's trippy to look at a, a a world map and to be able to point to places where there are team members you know uh, on board doing doing amazing stuff. And you can totally do it from New Zealand. Um, you know, uh, you don't need to raise money from New Zealand. You don't need to raise money from the U.S. We've raised money from the U.S. in subsequent rounds. Um, uh, but raising money shouldn't be a barrier. If you've got an amazing story and you can tell it well, uh, you, you'll find those investors. Um, but just start. Just start now. Cool. Thanks. <laughs>